But I'm guarding you and I'm playing you really tough and I'm uh, you're scoring on me. But I said, you know what? Fuck this, man. Let me foul this guy. And Rick Barry goes to the free throw line. Not a good idea to foul me. <laughs> Who, Rick, taught you? And some people say it's an unorthodox underhand shot, but you were deadly from the free throw line. How did you learn how to shoot free throws? That's my dad played semi-pro basketball and he was a coach. And back in those days, people shot the two-handed set shot like that. And then they shot two hands underhand. And so my dad got me to do it. I mean, he was relentless about it. And I only did it just to get him to stop bugging me about it. because <laughs> I, said, I can't do that. I mean, the girls shoot that way. So he said, son, I remember it like it was yesterday, Coop. I said, son, they can't make fun of you if you're making them. And That's he was funny. right. And I, I, I remember it's so vivid in my mind. I mean, this is a long time ago, folks. First game, high school, when I started to do it, I don't remember it was my junior or senior year. I'm in Scotch Plains, New Jersey. I'm shooting my free throws, and I hear a guy yelling from the stands, hey, Barry, a big sissy shooting like that. And I heard so perfectly clear from the guy next to him, what are you making fun of him for? He doesn't miss. <laughs> <laughs> so I was cool. I was cool with that. And here's the thing. It's the only part of the game that you can be selfish and help your team. The yeah. only part of the game. Because it's totally, completely individual on you. And you can be as selfish as you want to be. And you're never going to hurt your team. You're going to help your team by making your free throws. And it's something you can always get better at. Like I've always felt you should be never satisfied with what you're doing on the court as far as your skill level. You should always try to improve. I was a better free throw shooter at the end of my career than it was at the beginning. I just wish I had been smart enough to have figured out what I figured out late in my career, early in my career, when I was shooting over 10 free throws a game early in my career, mm. I could have put up some crazy numbers if I was shooting this way, because my last six years, I have the highest free throw percentage of anybody in the history of the game. My last six years, I shot over 92%. My last two years, I shot over 94%. Wow. I mean, so I took great pride in my free throw shooting. In fact, I remember my last two seasons, I missed a total of 19 free throws and the whole season I, I had missed well the whole season I missed I missed nine in one season and ten in another season wow and so and I remember John Andre Jordan uh <laughs> Andre Jordan uh Drummond uh Andre Drummond in, from the Pistons in one game a few seasons ago missed 22 free throws in one game he missed more free throws in one game than I missed in two seasons <laughs> Hey, Rick, how many, how, well, how many in a row did you make? How many? What, what I was had the record mean? at one time at 60, and I was always upset with myself. I think I, if I had, I didn't have that other technique. And, and so if I had that other technique early in my career, I think I could have put up a number. I always mad that I didn't shoot 100 or more. I wanted to make 100 or more consecutive free throws, but I had the record for quite a while. I had that 60. And then the, you'll get a kick out of this because you know Murph, Cavill Murphy. So – he was my teammate with the Rockets. And so I, I, I was getting to head as Calvin, you do realize that, you know, as long as I'm on this team, you're never going to win the free throw shooting you know, uh, competition. And I said, and plus the fact I'm going to shoot the technical fouls if I'm in the game when a technical happens, because I'm a better free throw shooter than you. <laughs> still in his head. And he was a great free throw shooter, obviously. And so I beat him and I did that. And then I the year I retired, I had the record at 94.7 for the season. Okay. Calvin broke the record the next season after I retired. Wow. <laughs> Let me talk something from you. You or Bill Sharman have the record, the late Bill Sharman, coach for the Lakers. So Bill, didn't Bill, Coach Sharman, shoot him underhand too? No, no, no. Bill was all one-handed. Oh, a, okay. Like, no, Bill was a one-handed shooter. Nobody, Nobody's really been a great – when I came in the league, there was only two guys shooting underhanded free throws. Guy Rogers, my teammate, and Al – and uh, was it uh, – so another guy that played for the, for the 76ers. There were only two guys – that shot the ball that way. It's shot on the hand. And, uh, and then there was only, there was very few afterwards, George Johnson, my teammate, I worked with him. He went from being like a 50% free throw shooter. I think one season when he was with the Nets, I think he wound up shooting 80%. But that it's always, it, you know, free throw is all about, it's just a matter of technique. I mean, just getting this, I don't care what, how you want to shoot it. it. If you get the technique and you practice it enough so that you can do it time after time, you really have to become sort of robotic at it. Muscle I mean, memory. Right that it's such a feel like even today, even at my advanced age, I can go out if I loosen up and I will bet you anything you want to bet that I'll make eight out of 10 with my eyes. Wow. Is that muscle memory? Yeah. I mean, wow. it's I have a feel like I was just down in Mexico fly for, you know, doing some bass fishing, not fly fishing, but bass fishing. And these guys were crazy basketball fans and stuff. And one guy actually, who's the cook who he was a walk-on for the Mexican Olympic team and they had <laughs> skills and they could shoot the ball. 
So we went out there to shoot them, and I went to shoot in their basket. First of all, they didn't have where their exact free throw line was, so you had to kind of guess what the distance was. But then when I was shooting it, I, I said, I'll tell you, what, I bet you anything that that basket is a little bit high because I know the feel. Yeah. And when I shoot it, I kept That's hitting short. it in the rim. So I'm saying that basket, I, it's high. It's not real high, but I guarantee you it's more than 10 feet. Because there's, no way that, there's no way I'm going to hit the front rim a bunch of times. So, yeah, and, and, and I was crazy. I mean, I would go to the arenas and drive this guy's nuts. I go to the arena and go shoot it. I mean, the basket is not totally squared the way it's supposed to be. I'm saying this rim is screwed. I'm saying so they come and they measure it. Sure enough, they had to readjust the basket. I mean, it's just it's something that you just get a feel for. CLNS History is brought to you by FanDuel, the exclusive wagering partner of the CLNS Media Network. 